uh, Yoda in the background. It's apropos. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. All right, so welcome uh, to Happy Hour with Heather and Guest. Um, I am joined by Rain and Shane Thirteen from the band They Watch Us from the Moon from uh, yeah, Lawrence, Kansas. LFK baby, which yeah. was uh, that was another interest. This you were the first band uh, that I had listened to from Kansas. Um, oh really? I'm sure the scene. The, the scene is probably bigger than I would imagine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of bands between Kansas City, Lawrence, and Topeka. It's kind of a stacked Tri-Cities thing going on, and there's tons of bands. Tons gotcha. of bands. Yeah. It's um, I remember talking to a guy named uh, Patrick Nahoda, who's in Nashville, and he was telling me how, how big the Nashville scene is for – you know, stoner and doom, which you don't really think oh. about, I guess. Oh yeah. Actually I, I used to live and work in the Nashville area and um, I used to work in like top tier fine dining restaurants. And um, that was my old, old game. <laughs> and uh, there are, it's not just country music in Nashville. There's everything is there, but the stoner rock scene and the doom scene and the metal scene is like humongazoid in Nashville. Gotcha. We're actually yeah. playing there this summer uh, in July. We're playing at the Cobra Lounge. Cool. Check our Facebook page for advertising. For, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's great to know because that was actually going to be one of my questions is uh, gigs you were going to be playing. But um it's always interesting to find out that a lot of the regional scenes that you don't expect to have, you know, a ton of, of um, music of this genre does. Like, um, I would, you know, you, uh, it makes sense that there would be great music coming out of Kansas um, in the doom, stoner, psychedelic genres, but um, typically it gets overshadowed by the, you know, by what's happening on the coasts, I guess, or, you know, the Pacific Northwest or New, or New Orleans even. Man, I'll tell you, it, I think people don't realize this, but okay, so back in, when I was a young boy, there was a, there was a, a place here called the Outhouse. And in, I remember in, God, it had to be 1990, 91 or 92, Caius came through on tour with a punk band called the Dwarves because they were both on SST records. And um, they came to back through Kansas a good number of times in the early 90s. I was in a band at the time that opened up for Caius every other time they came back through town. I remember seeing Sleep at the bottleneck in little sleepy Lawrence, Kansas, uh, 1993. I think they were opening up for Hawkwind. The first time I ever saw him. <laughs> and <laughs> my friend, my roommate and, and the guy I was in a band with at the time came home and he like, you got it. He worked at the bottleneck. He's like, you got to come see this band, dude. I saw him sound check. You're going to just going to blow your mind. And I'm like, okay, yeah, come down there. Went down there. And the first five minutes of their set was feedback. I leaned over to my, buddy Doug I'm like I've already seen this freaking band <laughs> I'm leaving <laughs> you know you watch feedback bands that's majority of the thing back then you know lots of noise sure. and feedback I was like dude I'm leaving and I turned to walk away and they hit into dragon not boom boom I was like what was that and I turned around and watched for a minute and they just blew my mind and he looked at me he's like told you told you I was like so I mean that genre has floated through here since it started. So yeah, it's all over the place. Yeah. Well, I'm, I've, I've come to learn that there are going to be these regional pockets of really dynamite music. Um, you know, that's one of the, that when I, I think initially when I heard about your band, um, the, the name of the band was what hooked me. You know, they watch us from the moon and then, then it was sort of like, okay, but let's see what the music is like. Um, and then the music delivered. So yeah, awesome. Thank so you. it was like, you know, the initial impression was, well, that's a cool name. Let me check them out. Um, 
And then I saw, I, I know um, the, the album that's coming out May, uh, 12. May 12th, um, Chronicles Act One, The Ascension, um, that that's your, I guess, your first full length album? First full length album for this band, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a long time coming. We started recording <laughs> that like before the pandemic started. Gotcha. It was just a. We got through it. We made it. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but, sure. Uh, well, it's I. I had the the privilege of listening to it. It's a dynamite album. Um, Thank you. The best way to describe it is something I actually found on your Bandcamp page that reads: uh, "Fellow space travelers, Hawkwind and Pink Floyd, and even Spaceman Three have been in similar orbits before, but never this heavy." They watch us from the moon, doesn't just breathe new life into cosmic tones, they take it to a different level. Uh, a space opera for heavy psych doomers and shoegazers alike, something new within heavy psychedelics. In fact, it's something new everywhere. And uh, sometimes if I discover something that hits the nail right on the head, I'll, I'll relay it to people. But that, that was so accurate. I was like trying to figure out how I, how do I describe this band because they do have there are elements of Pink Floyd and Hawkwind, but it's also really heavy and slow. Yeah. Um, so I felt like that was a great description. If you're looking for those elements, um, then definitely there's stuff on this album that will satisfy that. So, yeah, it's all over the map, man. We. I, <laughs> We also feel it's fairly accessible through different genres as well. Like it's not, I mean, I think it, we're finding that all kinds of people have appeal to it, which is awesome. It just kind of blows my mind. Because when we've had people make comparisons to, like you said, Pink Floyd, but then also Fleetwood Mac and ABBA yeah. and like, wow, that's, that's a pretty heavy arena. <laughs> I appreciate it. We all do. That's like, you know, we've all talked about that. Like, holy crap, that's that's heavy for us. Yeah, you know. I yeah. Mean, well, me- it's it's you know, there's um, it's interesting that you brought up accessible because I feel like there are a lot of there's a lot of music out there that I want to share with people that it's difficult to because it is inaccessible. But um, I think anyone would find something enjoyable in your music uh, because it, it, it's a pretty varied. Um, yeah. you know, the, it hits you on the one hand with like heavy, you know, sort of doom elements. Um, but then you've got the, the two harmonizing operatic vocals, which yeah. is sort of the other end of the spectrum. Um, that's, the, that's the key right there to our, our sound and our, you know, our direction is those harmonies and melodies that those ladies are producing is just incredible. You know, I mean, when we heard them do it for the first time, it was mind blowing. It's like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe they walked into the room, you know, it's like, Holy crap. What are they doing here? <laughs> you know, But yeah, it's well, just kind it, of, it, it's, it's sort worked. of, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, I mean, it does sound the same, but it reminded me of like Alice in Chains. You had this sort of the, har- the harmonic vocals going between Lane, uh, Lane Staley and Jerry Cantrell, uh, yeah. which, which didn't, you know, it fit the music, which was really heavy, but it could have also been an opera, you know, or something like that. So, yeah, I well, like- oddly, oddly enough, like, when people ask me what I describe it as, I, I refer to it as a cosmic doom opera because that's, yeah. it, it, it's a connection between the vocals and the idea that we're, we're telling a story. Like it's a whole front to back narrative when we play live and, you know, the album's the same way. There's a narrative in there and uh, mm-hmm. that's all going to come to fruition when the comic book comes out. But, um yeah it's we're we're trying to be as you know progressive as we can i think we ended up 
sounds crazy. And I'm, I've heard other people say it as well, that we've kind of stumbled upon a new, a new genre, you know, I mean, it's just, there's nothing like us. I would certainly echo those sentiments that it is, a, <laughs> it's a unique combination. Um, I hadn't quite heard it before in terms of the, the, the way everything comes together. Um, and it's re it's really cool. And it's all the elements that I enjoy from, from all of these genres sort of put together in one great thing. So oh, thank you. I would, I would Glad certainly, <laughs> I would certainly suggest to check out, you can check out right now. Mother of all bastards is the single that, yes, you, can, yep. that you can listen to on Bandcamp. Um, that'll yep. give you a taste of what you're in store for, but it won't reveal everything that's on the album. Um, no. <laughs> there's a lot of really cool stuff in there that you'll have to wait till May 12th, but I would recommend pre-ordering it now um, and getting it when Please it drops. Do. But um, do. yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it is, it is unique. Like I was trying to take time to think like, okay, what, that's why when I read uh, that Hawkwind and Pink Floyd have been on the same journey, but not quite to the same place. I thought, yeah. okay, that's a great, that's a great way to sort of give you an idea of what you're in store for. Yeah, but, um, it, we we tried to put together a journey. You know, there's a lot of layers in there, and there and you're gonna get a different vibe out of the album if you listen to it like live out of your speakers versus in a headphones, and like like you know a good headset, not just earbuds, but there's some sonic subliminal things going on in there that you won't you won't really pick up on until you do a deep study but it there's a lot of layers going on I, yeah i'm kind of i'm kind of envious of rain in a way because this is going to sound weird but he was a he was a fan before he joined the band so he has a very interesting view of like what we're doing because he he's also seen us in like different evolutions of our <laughs> yeah thing yeah, how, so how, what what was it well, what's your experience been like so far Rand? uh it's been great um i've been with the band for roughly six months now and um like I, like shane was saying just seeing the evolution of things i've i've been here in the lawrence kansas music scene for about seven years now seven eight years um so like Shane has mentioned, I've, I've seen them in the different iterations. And the last time that I saw them, uh, I mentioned this a couple days ago. Um, I saw them with Crowbar and just like every other fan there, there was moments when Twelftum was playing that it was just transfixing. Like the it was, and I consciously remember looking back and like seeing all these fans just like standing stock still while the, while the girls were just singing this super operatic part. Um, and I was like, man, this band has really just notched it up and the songs are so much tighter. The, the pro professionalism is, has grown. Um, so it's been amazing being in the, being to be able to play with them. Um, I think these songs are super broad appeal and it's not something we find super often in death metal or uh, do metal, but, um, I'm kind of loving it. It's 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 been great to explore how this genre can evolve and progress. So it's been a great time. Awesome, yeah. yeah. It, it's going going back to the accessible thing. I had a, a previous show um, that began where I would try to convince uh, friends of mine to listen to metal, uh, <laughs> and one of the um, recurring guests toward the end was my mother, and I would always <laughs> be excited because she's a fan of Billy Joel. Um, okay. So, uh, but if I found something that she would like, I considered that to be such a huge win. Um, and it always oh, came yeah. down to how accessible it was. So yeah. I feel like I could take this album to her and she would find elements within it that would appeal to her as well. Um, yeah, that's cool. So yeah, I'll, I'll have to that's let awesome. you know if I, if I end up doing that, um, what her response I, was. You know, and I, I know that sounds a lot of, there's a lot of people maybe that are younger than us. You, I'm guessing you're close to my age, but um, 
people have to remember that when we say stuff like that, like, cause my mom likes it too. And when we say stuff like that, you got to realize like that generation of people are the grateful dead and iron butterfly and, you know, Jefferson airplane, like th- those our parents generation were the psychedelic generation. So I, I don't, oddly enough, I've found a lot of older folks that uh, love it. And, and just, and I think that's part of the reason why it's kind of got that seventies, six, late sixties, seventies throwback thing going on with the, the harmonies and melodies and the vocals and just the fuzzy guitars, you know, that kind of thing. But it, it's reached a lot of different people and you know that's really cool for us we we like that and had no intention of entertaining grandmothers but if they like it that's fine <laughs> right well it's a it's a i i feel like the appeal is very wide in this case um a lot yeah. of times if you if you get into heavier sort of music you have more of a narrow fan base right. but i feel like there's enough going on in your like you said it's layered plus the the combination of heavy and light elements to it, I think, will appeal to a lot of people. Um, yeah, and it is. It's unlike anything I've heard recently. Uh, really, awesome. just the combination. So, I would definitely recommend to check out some of the stuff you already had. There's an EP, a couple singles that you can find. Um, Chronicles Act One drops on May 12th, uh, and and I, it's easy to find you. The the name is oh, unique yeah. enough. They watch us from the moon. Um, any social media platform, any all the big ones anyway, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Bandcamp, of course. We're on Spotify. Cool. Apple, yeah. all that. I I heartily recommend that you don't waste any more time. Um, as soon as you finish watching us right now, or even hit pause and go check out the music. Um, it is definitely <laughs> it is definitely worth your time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I so, appreciate that. Well, yeah, and so you mentioned you're playing um you're you're going to be playing uh in July. Um I've already forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot where you where you're going to be playing. Um we're doing a lot of stuff actually and I I'm going to throw out some uh days and times but please if you're interested in these areas just go to our Facebook and uh there's all kinds of information about what we're doing there, but um, we open up for Yob on June 1st. And then at the end of June 23rd and 24th, we're down in uh, college station, Texas uh, at the one Oh one. And then we play at the boom, boom room after that, the next day in Lafayette, Louisiana. And then um, we, uh, Last part of July, we roll up to uh, Des Moines and Chicago, and Mm then, um, or the first, yeah, and then um, after that, we're rolling through uh, St. Louis and Nashville, and then we're going to do another run down to Oklahoma and Texas uh, in August. So anybody in those areas interested in come seeing us, just pop onto our Facebook and scroll through a little bit and you'll find our list of shows and whatnot and come cool. see us. Yeah, it sounds like there's a, it's a busy summer. <laughs> yeah, That's hopefully. awesome. That's what we're shooting and, for. Uh, and Heather, who's uh, who lends her name to this show, she lives in Illinois. So perhaps when you, uh, when you go through Chicago, if, if the timing, yeah. Moves. but, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's great. Okay. It's, I, I'm glad, um, I'm glad you've got a bunch of shows coming up. Uh, definitely go check them out if you're in any of those uh, towns. Please but, do. Uh, listen to the music. You can do yes. that wherever you are. That's the the beauty of, of how this works. <clears throat> People don't realize that one of the best ways to help bands is go listen to their stuff streaming in, on yeah. any platform. We're, we're not even really asking you to pay for it. Just go listen to it. That It helps extremely huge matters for yeah. algorithms and all that so well, even if you just go listen we'd appreciate it go check out they watch us from the moon uh cosmic chronicles act one the ascension drops may 12th um there's a ton of music you can check out now 
uh, that's already on Bandcamp or any other streaming platform. And if you're in one of those cities, go see them. Please come so, say hey. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to speak with me. Yeah, thank, thank you for sure having us. Yeah, of thank course. You. Have a, have a good one. Good luck with everything, and we'll uh, we'll be in touch. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank right. you very Thanks much for having us on.